to the guy who did that, that video, the movie. Because in the movie, the guy never made any commentary about the amount of money the American government pays to the government of the Marshall Islands. And it's significant money. As a matter of fact, it seems as if they were corrupt, meaning the government of the Marshall Islands was, the government was um, utilizing the money for their own use, like everywhere right, else in the world. Right. And then they found out and, and the people rebelled and they got rid of him. Um, but the kind of money they have to pay the Marshall Islands for the destruction of all this nuclear testing and right. like that has been phenomenal. Significant funds. As a matter of fact, when I looked at it, I was in awe to, to try to say to myself, how do these people continue to exist like this, knowing fully well that they are surrounded by pollution? In the, in the, in, in, um, in the Pacific, there is a thing called the Pacific Dump, you know. Where all the plastic Correct. gets there. Though. Do you see? They said so big. What about the big like Texas? Watch that, I can hold the whole Caribbean. It, it, the, the depth below the water to the top is nearly mm. as high as Mount Hololo in Trinidad. The reality, and I want to apologize to all the people on social media. Robert told me in this conversation as a touchdown, you know, I forget to start the video. <laughs> and now start the video. If only know what they miss. Listen, Robert, here's archive your video on, on 104.7. No, we can go. If only know what they miss. But anyway, we're trying to redo and touch again because I'm sorry. It, it, it's heat from the moment I start. <laughs> and there's so much going on. I mean, the truth of the matter is, when you look at this country, Robert, when you look at it and you look at what has been allowed to pass for leadership for all of these years, look out the window, look at the sidewalks, that grass in the drain. This is Paul Carew Street that leads you to movie town from Tragreet Road, Sinclair. This is a busy, this ought to be upper class road. I mean, road yeah, yeah, this can right. be no low class road. Not, we, we're not in the back of Lavantil. But that doesn't mean it's a Lavantil low class. Eh? Hey, brother, that's how <laughs> they behave. I walked Diego Martin with a music truck when I ran for elections in 2015. Robert, I walked from Bagatelle to Caranage. And I have said since that the easiest way to tell when you're in a PNM region, look at the, look at the condition yeah, around yeah, yeah. you. As you walk down the <laughs> mountain main road and it starts to get better, you know you're coming into a middle class area. Why is the road, the pavement, the infrastructure cleaner and better there? The people in the area not doing it. Government doing it. Local government and central government doing it. But they know that these people not accepting nonsense. It has come down to the point where... They show what you want, where you want. Especially if they exa accepted that. Way. Exactly. Yeah. Man don't buy roses for women he have. <laughs> he have that woman. Are you speaking from experience? I'm yeah. just the flower shop <laughs> terminal. The flower shop terminal. But, 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 but come back to the truth. Come back. We, we, we read something about the SEA, the child abusing SEA. Right now, while we're talking, 20,000 children are being abused by the state. Right now. We are forcing 20,000 children to believe that the positions of good education is scarce. That is fake scarcity. But you know, it is... Robert, you're spending $5 billion this it, year. It goes back to the point of what, what I think you were saying, that in our education system, the schools have to all be accepted at one level. You cannot afford to have a school what where, Finland says. Where, where the young people that go to Fatima is different. Have better education, have better education than, than the people who go into Morva yeah, Junior yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, but, Chubinus. but that's the point. But you see, we've damaged our country. Agreed, but we, we, Rafik Shah uh -huh. spoke about it 30 years ago. You know, Rafik Shah wrote a column, and I will never forget reading that. You know, he said, "All of y'all who live in gated communities, the man who run in the gate, he don't live in your community." You know. It's you have a responsibility to make sure that this nation don't collapse. Yeah. Because if people have no reason, you see the videos in Venezuela yeah, with these young people up. climbing up people balcony yeah, yeah. up the building. Yeah. Did they hungry? A hungry man. I want to hear about nothing, you know. Yeah. I don't know the circumstances. It didn't specify. Robert, it is hunger driving I this. I didn't say no. I said I don't know. I will climb up a building if I'm right. hungry. You I too. Am not, I am not saying that I wouldn't. But the point I'm making is that I've been doing that model that they show. As I pointed out to somebody, I said, but they're going to the top of the roof. They're not even entering into the homes. I didn't see nobody 
try to break so, in our window. So where did they go in every report? I don't know. No, but at this point, where are you going to Maybe they have a now? door up there to come down. I don't know. I don't know. I say I don't know the circumstances. So I can't make Robert, it. across the street from you, the Ministry yeah. of Education has spent tens of millions of dollars to build a mm -hmm. shell, a steel shell, that was a school before Trinidad was independent. This was a children's school before Trinidad had its independence right here. Yeah. Woodbrook Government School. Yeah. Yes. And that is going on there how long now? Four years? Four years, I think it will be five Four, years. Five week. years. Five years. I'm not finished. Five years public funds spent. Where are the children that used to go to that school? They're all over. They're, They're all over. over. Yeah. If you wait five years, because that is the full input to transition. Five yeah. years. Standard one to standard five. You see, if I one percent are watching that corner. This is Paul Caruso Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A nice building there. Nice there, man. Yeah, it's a good thing. High yeah, yeah. traffic location. Next door to A.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the road from Pizza Hut, Roxy. You're facing one Woodbrook place. It have value. What the hell are government school doing there? Yeah. So if you could pause, stick a pin. Let five years pass. So parents stop thinking about Woodbrook government school as an option. Yeah, of course, of course. Start putting your children somewhere else. Well, the, the now all of a sudden, they could tell you in the parliament, nobody don't really enroll in the school no more. Uh, so we point it for sale. The parents really have done nothing since the school started to build. They've they, they got quiet because they started to see what was happening. But stick up it. Recently, in April, and I'm just talking about the speed a little bit. Recently in April, I saw in the newspaper six portions of land, 99 year lease, ETEC. I wrote the Minister of Trade the other day because I said in my letter to her, I can't understand. In 2015, when I met with you, when I was at a particular position in a different organization, I said to you, we needed a piece of land. We needed about 75 acres. Four of the five pieces of land that they put up for sale that Ernest and Young, I think, is the front where you had to put in your bids for a 99-year lease. One is 350 acres and the other three pieces are 70 acres to 75 acres. Enough to do something for developing Trinidad and Tobago into a different economic time because we are not going to see any manufacturing taking place in this country for the next 50 years. Unless we create and find something in Trinidad and we can manufacture here. Raw material. You talk about it the other day. Pitch. If we could take the pitch and convert it into something about, else. What about juice? Pepper spray? And what about, condom, what about we condoms? We could, make, we could make pitch condoms, yeah. <laughs> because it's rubber. Blowing it out. <laughs> My point to you You're is that <laughs> what I'm saying is they put up that to sell including over the weekend I looked at the building they break down which is the old central statistical office. And I'm asking, why do you tell coming to Robinson Bridge right? just give the instructions to break that down? One healthy, strong tail Was building. that our building? Was it belonged to the state. The state bought it from Guardian Life. When Guardian Life went and went down the road, they bought that from them. You see, every time the state owns a building, Robert, you are robbing people who have buildings to rent their friends in government. Okay, but I, I don't want to... Really no, but you that. have to, because you see, the people will listen and think that it's government by accidental vaps. It's easy to excuse a man for stupidity, you know. When you have to realize that you're dealing with somebody who is utilizing a direct approach to, to robbing you, that's a different thing. But that's why I want to make the, problem, the, the issue about the Workers' Bank building and the IDC building in the bottom. We have an a, a, a organization in Trinidad and Tobago called TUCO. Supposed to be one of the leading charges of our cultural revolution in an old stinking building wrong in Belmont that they're renting from some party hack for about 20 years. A former mayor, San Fernando, I understand. And they're in this little latrine place. You can't even get a car back to tell you how bad it is. And when you walk into the office, okay, it's not bad. The atmosphere is okay. It's clean and then. But when you're walking there, it's like if you're going into an apartment building that has prostitution taking place around it. Derelict. Derelict looking all the way around. In Belmont, I mean, Tuco has been there for how much years? You have this big stinking building belonging to the IDC that was there before. You let it fall apart, vandalize. You put it up to sell it now. Who do you have anything going to buy it? 
The man got the money. Because if you and I go and tell them, hey, we're going to take it over, we're going to fix it and we're going to do it. No. That's what's going on. We're not interested. But Robert, that's what's behind this fake recession. Robert, that's what's behind this fake recession. So I wrote the minister about this piece of land because I have a dream that one the Bill of Motor is struck in Trinidad and Tobago for years. Right. That's why I went in and took over the presidency of Trinidad and Tobago Automobile Sports Association. Right. Took it from not being operational, got the previous government to reopen the track. Right. Together with Frankie Boudram and myself, we were able to get the Ministry of Resurface. I know, I remember place. hearing E-Tech say, oh God, boy, just get him on the lad here, Robert, and give me a break. I remember, I remember that's a real fight and, for and, that. And we got it. You got it. All these guys who know any motor racing place, if it wasn't for me, they'd never get no, here. No, understandable. But, and I like all so, things, so, they kicked me in my backside. What's going forward with that? Well, going forward is to try to get this piece of land. Now, the state wants to sell these pieces of land on a 99-year lease to some individual. Unfortunately, they didn't put a closing date in the document. I'll show it to you before you leave. And when I call the company, Ernest and Young, they tell me, I didn't know that those dates are closed. I said, but they didn't have a date in the newspaper. She said, well, it wasn't supposed to be there, you know. It's when you collect your package, we will tell you. Convenient BS again. So I've written to the minister, and I've copied the prime minister, and I want to see what the hell they will do, because they're talking about deepening the economy. And motor racing is a good and profitable business. I don't know if you were listening to the show yesterday. No, I was listening to the show. But you we were, the judge put me out of the court. We were talking about the amount of people that are connected to this country and sport. Of course. If, if you know, were to I take, that part when you if you about, take uh, national uh, lottery yeah, control board, Robert, very good point. and peg that to sport, you know what's going on in this country? Well, world class cyclists, world class track and field. Children that will qualify for the money. We had the money. And you now have the talent. And now you can tell people, boy, play a play when I even get throw any money and help in sport. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Instead of, instead of the National Lottery Board giving a little handout to one of the friends or something. Somebody is get fifty thousand dollars a month to maintain <clears throat> the little triangle outside Crystal Stream Church. And all they ever do is pop that sign maintained by. You serious? Absolutely. Did you get the Listen now, you you in the PNN? <laughs> Them is PNN people. Them is PNM people, directors of that company. When I exposed that right now, tell me, Philip, I was part of the foreman of the company, but I resigned. So that is a company that have no directors, but getting a check every month. 25 minutes after 11 o'clock, that time come, time check comes through the kind courtesy of Rodney Supermarket. Rodney Supermarket, two locations in Arima. Go on out to Rodney's and support them. They are definitely that place in Arima they get all kind of meat, including rabbits. Yes. We pay some bills. When we come back, we rejoin the program. L, the place you need to be is the Boss of Soup. The Boss of Soup is open every Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Sunday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Six locations nationwide. Number 48 Trabridge Road in Port of Spain at West Bees in Dale Martin. Corner of Prince Street and El Carmen Street in Arima. Two Way Road Junction, Sangri Grandi. This, this Station in, in Shogonas and inside Atlantic Mall Point Lisas. Check us out. The boss of soup. If it's not the boss, it's not the best. For more information, call 389-4455. It's the night before Mother's Day. The night where one color can Saturday, 12th May. One place. One people. Don't know anybody want to go to a good party. Black is a good party. Coming through. Have a VIP section for each and each. 500. Or regular 200. Pass it out in your... I will. Send me the info. Send me the info. When we come back, I want to come back with these speed and things back up with this. Because you have to do the timing when we come back. The timing is more fun. The timing is more fun. They're running on money. They're running on money. That should be under the commissioner of police, right? Kabuki's Black Event, courtesy 104.7, the official station for Kabuki's Black, powered by high-level audio. 
I can't bring myself to eat that. Yeah, yeah. When I went to China, I eat a I eat a piece of beaver. I don't know what the hell it was, but the Chinese made sure it was what we were eating. I don't know about the tears. Super quality will never be beaten on price. Conveniently located at Trin City, Cuba, and in Devereux, Georgia. Super quality will never be beaten on price. Conveniently located at Trin City, Cuba, and in Devereux, Georgia. Why this man was still getting on this fresh bite? The blue shirt clown. Look out for our weekly specials. For further details, call 223 9715. Super quality never beaten on price. Twenty-nine minutes after eleven o'clock, that time check comes to you with a kind courtesy of Hearty Foods. Hearty Foods located out there in Arima. And don't forget people, lots of specials by Hearty Foods. Hot box twenty dollar daily roti special or the hot box barbecue special twenty-five and thirty-five dollars. Yes, twenty, twenty-five and thirty-five. Roti or barbecue. If you're a drinker, why talk? Two bottles, 750 ml, $170, $85 a bottle. If you like beer, five cases of beer and up, you get a special price. Go on down there and find out. And if you're a lover of leg and tie, you know where to go. Hearty Foods. Three packs of leg and tie for $30. And to those of you who want to enjoy entertainment at home, Magnum Portable Power Speaker, $1,450. Hearty Foods and Ashley's located in Arima. Go on down and cash in on the bargains. Okay, I was saying to Philip on the break that I wanted to spend a little time on this speed situation. I'm ashamed for the Commissioner of Police, acting or otherwise. I think, you know, there are so many things you can do. <clears throat> Common sense must be one of the factors that make you a Commissioner of Police, whether acting or otherwise. And if you don't have common sense, you should definitely take the opportunity right now, at this particular time, if you don't have a typewriter, a computer, a printer, call me, 738-3943. I will just type up the letter nice and thing for you. Address it to whoever you want me to address it to. I'll put your name in the bottom. I'll come by you. I promise you even to go and deliver the letter. It'll be a three-line thing. I so and so hereby tender my resignation with immediate effect. I wish to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to serve by no longer have the capacity, competence, or capability to do the job. Thanking you for the time, yours truly, Sam. You know, that, it, it's simple. I, I have that letter set up on my computer, so it's just a matter of cut and paste, as they say. It, it wouldn't take me long. As a matter of fact, I'll work with a portable printer if you want me to change it, because I have the technology. I'll change it on my phone, and I'll be able to download it and print it one time wirelessly. So you won't have a problem. And I have a nice small printer to walk around with. So here what? How idiotic it is for you as a commissioner of police to endorse and enforce speed testing over the radio. <clears throat> One of our staff members here got a ticket for a thousand dollars coming over the radio. The radio? That is the level of competence you have as a commissioner of police acting? You so damn stupid? You so dotish? You so intellectually constipated? Is that the best that you could do? When we have a case that took how much? What I told you this morning, people? 31, 31 years for a case to end for a man that robbed a, a, a soft drink vendor and a parlor since 1986. And you sitting down there in your glory office just living off of the fat of the nation for serving and doing nothing. That could really make sense. 90 year old people getting killed now? And you can't even find the culpable person? And the same stupidness, email gate still going on. And don't talk about all the other things. Prison gate, you can't, for, can't come to no conclusion. Policemen that do wrong things that's still in the service. And you have all the power. Because they change the legislation to make sure you have the power to fire. 
It seems as if they really have a... You see, I want to tell you this, Sarah, what? If I could stick up in for one minute. People labor under the misconception that the government can't correct the police service. And I want to expose the foolishness of this because I've been trying to get Trinidadians to Google, download, and read the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And I just want to put this quickly into the public space. The police service exists because a law was written that speaks the police service into existence. You understand that? Yeah. The Police Service Act. There must be a law that is in harmony with the supreme law, the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The parliament is spoken into reality, into the, by, the, by the Constitution. The president, the prime minister, the terms and conditions. The parliament is what represents all the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And it is the parliament that has the power to write law. The parliament has the power, if the 41 of them agree, the parliament has the power to amend the constitution. Obviously. The parliament could undo and redo the police service. All this first division, second division, third division nonsense that you hear in all the time. Decades now, rogue police, corrupt elements, six months. Six months the New York City Internal Affairs Department says it will take to beat the bush and run the rats. That's how they say it, you know. The rats will go running. I tell them, I say, somebody say you're not going to get cooperation. He said, we don't want cooperation. No, we don't want cooperation, we don't want cooperation from criminals. Suspect. Exactly. He said, we know how to get our information, friend. And this is the reality. We've never had a government. We've never voted a parliament that wanted to clean up the police service. It is manifestly dysfunctional. It is. You, have a, you have an internal police complaints division. You knew that? I didn't know that. That is a mirror of the external police complaints authority. Is it? Those two things exist. Two different things. To listen to the Hansard, to listen to the debate, when they debate about the police service, and I ask myself, is it that they're trying to say that when they meet in that hallowed space, that they're standing on an unstable platform trying to hit a moving target in the dark? <laughs> You're trying to tell me not one single person could come to the parliament and say, there are countries in the world where their police service function. You don't understand. The Let chairman, us. The chairman of this is Heinz. How are you expecting? Oh, go don't tell me that, no man. You just cuss and insult everybody listening to the show. Truth. Heinz is a jackass. Heinz is the chairman. He is a jackass. He watch me. In a jackass race, he's number one. Oh, good. You sure you can win? Listen, no man. <laughs> Let me look at <laughs> Robert, but, but come back on point and be serious. To the 41 members of the parliament listening today. This is your job. They're not interested. Robert, this is what they were elected to do. This is what I was telling somebody. This is their job. Earlier today, I was telling the guy that one of the things they don't understand is the Constitution. When you go up as a, as a person for election in a constituency, you don't go up there as a party. No. The, and the, people don't understand. The, constitu you don't tell them the Constitution does not recognize parties. Correct. There is only one asterisk amendment in the Constitution to remove you if you, if you fought on a party's ticket. I think it's 49C with an asterisk. But other than that, there is nothing in the Constitution that recognizes political parties. The 41 seats in the House do not belong to a party. Doesn't. They do not belong to a person. They belong to a constituency. Uh. The Speaker of the House recognizes Maruba Tabela. Maruba that's, Tabela. That's why every the time Speaker of the House rec recognizes Dego Martin. That is why every time the Speaker gets up there, they always call it order and say you have to refer to the person as the member of parliament. Of course, the of course. And the people, of course. Of course. And, and, and the nonsense that they people. Don't say the PMM member. No, but you see the nonsense that people put in pic pictures with, with Maxi and his bicycle helmet and saying, look, Maxi, Maxi still alive, Philip, look, Maxi still alive. I happy Maxi alive. Yeah, but but I am saying, provide a fit for work certificate. Yeah. The people deserve representation. This is the highest court in the land. Yeah. The parliament, if properly constituted and functional, could make Trinidad better. Obviously. You cannot continue to call it's what like happens. It's like the judiciary. Robert, you cannot continue to call what is happening in this country as representation and government. You cannot continue. Robert, a member. 31 years for a case. You, you, you want to raise that? You want to see that and raise it? We play in poker? Yeah, let me go. A member of the Progressive Empowerment Party, her sister, a senior member, Lorena Lucien, she was a police officer. Her sister, when she was a teenager, went to make a report in a police station and was raped by the senior officer inside the station. 
And that case took 17 years. And what is the result? What happened with it? They found him guilty. They found him guilty. But 17 yeah, years, yeah, what they, they, they had the amount of people he They had the matches. Yeah. They had the mat this piece of sponge. They even had that. And I asked the question. First day of the matter, there's a victim, there's a culprit, there's a matches. <laughs> what they do for the rest of the time? Yeah, yeah, so. What took 17, 17 years, 363 days? I hear you, new Philip. And I understand that this is the point where I was making this this morning. I wanted to drive this point home for the people at Trinidad and go to listen. That Robert, the problem in Trinidad and go, you the people. Robert, get the Chief Justice, a functional Chief Justice, and a law association to agree. You see, you need them to agree. But you could write law that regardless of whether or not they agree, you're going to have to disturb people. You know, Gloria Steinem said the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Yeah. In Trinidad and Tobago, our court system seems to have been designed to fail. Yeah. We have no case management. <clears throat> I am speaking to an international compliance officer from a global bank yesterday. And she is telling me, she said, I am on assignment in Trinidad. And I cannot believe what banks get away with in Trinidad. Hmm. She said, what banks do as business as usual in Trinidad someone would have been jailed for in Canada. I wouldn't know that. You understand? Understand what we're dealing with. A country where, if you talk about the court system and you understand that you could say as law that the judge has a responsibility to the case. You see, when you're watching Law and Order and all those shows and people stand up to beg for an adjournment and the judge not interested in that, you have to have a real reason to adjourn this case. Because there is a clock on the case. Yeah. There's a clock running. And the judge is judged by his management of that clock. The judge knows he has five years for this criminal matter to work its way through his system. Finish. And if five years pass and the case not done, the case could get tossed. And he, as the judge, failed. And that goes as a black mark on his record. So the judge is foolish. In Trinidad, the bigger we are talking about. Robert, when you in a court and you hear your honor... The witness is a police officer. This is the third time and he has not made himself available. The magistrate or the judge have the authority to issue a bench warrant. Of course. Go and pick him up and bring him here. And not only that, the magistrate you... could review the, the, the nature of the case and if it's a speeding case or a parking on the wrong side case, could say, dismissed. Go and bring him here. The lawyer not here, look at bench warrant. The second bring time, him bring him here. Wherever he is. Because you see what case management... The lawyers will know. Robert, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. This is disgusting. What I'm about to say here is disgusting. They have lawyers in this country that work for the appearance fee. You know? Yeah, of course. We know that. They're like a Calypsonian. Yeah, at, yeah. At, 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 at They're just waiting. They're just waiting. No, but they don't mind that a case that could be solved in two sessions take to take. No, no. Every time they get Because $3,000 yeah. are in court. $90,000 for a matter that should have cost five. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Anyhow, just to come back on this whole position of the um, penalty, because we want to go to this um, issue of global medical in a, in a little while. Remember, people, I don't understand what the commissioner is instructing, because somebody had to give instructions, and he must know by now, because if he doesn't know, he's not managing. At the end of the day, he should be able to know how much was the income from speeding, from parking, Move from wrecking. beyond that. Mm -hmm. Tell the parliament make the police service functional or fire yourself fire the parliament put a parliament robert it starts there you keep asking me where it starts it starts there the police service is non-functional the parliament job is to fix it well i must give credit though philip that i think the parliamentary committees is trying to help fix it i don't know about your view <clears throat> but i've looked at it and some of those people who are involved in the parliament i think we are seeing them already doing things. Have you ever heard the term critical failure? Yes. And escalating a commitment to a bad decision? They have only so much wrong you could put on top of something else before the whole thing collapse. The police service is a mess. I have police officers writing me and telling me that they have not been paid for months. Police service. Robert, the police service is the only people in this country that wake up every morning and go to work to put their lives on the line for everybody else. I'm painting all the police officers with the same brush as the corrupt officers. 
I know we have corrupt and rogue elements. The, poli the PCA director, David West, called the police the biggest gang in Trinidad. He did. But I know that there are good and decent police officers in that service. And those people wake up every morning and say goodbye to their wife and their husband and their children and not knowing if they're going to reach home. They're the front line of this country's defense. And, and more the reason why I'm saying that if these people, in view of the... I want to run out of time. In view of the things that we need... I want to give you some information. Yeah, but before I get that, in view of the things that are necessary, we have to tell ourselves that we have to start somewhere. You say it's not really parliament, but you start you, you starting with Mount Everest. I really want to start with, with Hololo Hill. <laughs> I am calling on the commissioner of police to take these useless people. I know nobody that got killed on the Aubrey Jeffers Highway. I know nobody. Which one is that? For sure? Yeah. The piece found by peaks down. I know people getting killed by traffic right by peaks. Mm -hmm. But on the piece of highway going down to the stadium, I know nobody that got killed there. Robert. And I'm not making excuses. I broke the rule. I was 13, min 13 mi um, kilometers per hour over the speed limit. It's supposed to be 80. I really thought that the highway was 100. I didn't read the rule, and they have never really promoted that the orbit. It doesn't even have signs on it. Robert. But the worst part is coming over the lady on your charger. Now, they're hiding around the savannah. Wrong the savannah. Nobody desperate for money. Wrong the savannah, you're going to charge somebody? They're desperate for money. What kind of idiots we have? Robert, they're desperate and for money. And you the police service too, you stupid policemen that are outside there that are going to do that. Where Tell your you boss you're not going. What you have between 9 and noon this Sunday? If you have nothing to schedule that, and let's take these things apart. I want to tell, I want to tell you something here. Could I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. The two hours it took for four-year-old Natalia Samuel to be taken from Cedros Health Center to the Point Fourteen Area Hospital may have been one of the major factors leading to her death. Her mother, Basde Lal Rabu, said yesterday. Health Minister Terence Dalsing last evening said he could not comment on the unavailability of the ambulance service to pick up the child at the beach unless he knew who the family contacted on Sunday. Robert, I have so much information. I just want to give you what I could in this 15 minutes. In this 15 minutes, I want you to hear this. Eh? You hear some of this? Some of this that's going on with this global medical response. The multi-billion dollar contract for a national ambulance service by global medical response of Trinidad and Tobago is under review by the Attorney General's office, says Health Minister Attorney General um, Terence Dialsing. Global Medical Response Trinidad and Tobago owes the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago money for failing to provide the service and the number of ambulances and no minister and no ministry could continue to go on paying 30 million a year and they're not fulfilling the contractual arrangements, said Surud Rambachan in the parliament. The oh. Alsing said he too was concerned by Global Medical Response Trinidad and Tobago's contract. When I looked at the contract, this is the health minister on his legs in the parliament. Robert, I have reams of paper, and I want global medical response to understand that I am, I, if I have to reach a privy council with this case, I am not stopping. The Alsing said he too was concerned by global medical response's contract. When I looked at the contract, I immediately sent the contract to the office of the attorney general for the attention of Minister Stuart Young to look at because the concerns you are raising, this is bipartisan, eh? I flag them, and the office of the Attorney General will advise me. Mm. Rambachan asked the minister whether he was aware that Global Medical Response Trinidad and Tobago has been making this promise to supply new ambulances and bring the fleet up to speed for the last two years. The Alsing said he was told that there are ambulances under construction, as he stressed that the bigger issue is whether the country was getting value for money with the contract. Are you prepared to continue the waste, corruption, and mismanagement in the Ministry of Health in this regard, asked Rambachan? Young interjected. I think the minister has already said it's been sent to the office of the Attorney General. We will review, and we will take what needs to be taken, the steps that need to be taken. The Nothing. The CYA, the CYA Cover minister. your own ass. Minister of Propaganda. Yeah. The same thing happened with me and him with Nitko, you know. I asked him for the information, the, the information that he talked about with regards to the money that we're supposed to get back from Brazil. And he's supposed to send me the file. Amal like two years ago. Amalgamated Security oh owns Global Medical Response. And that, that, again. Amalgamated Security, Prisoner on Justice on Time, Prisoner Transport, owns Global Medical Response. Hear this. 
Everyone has seen the manner in which Amalgamated Security Services Limited and the police transport inmates, everybody sees the speed, the brake lights, all this sort of thing is happening on the road. How is that in the best interest of public safety? Gordon called for a full investigation to be done to determine how the contract was awarded. Gordon? This is the prisoner, prison officer, prison officers association president, oh. Seron Richards and the secretary general, Gordon. Go we also want a full investigation into the awarding of that contract. We want to know if the tendering process for that was applied. We want to know if it was legal, if it was a sole tender. We want to know everything that surrounded the awarding of this contract. We are totally disgusted by the direction of the government of Toronto Tobago. This is the Prison Officers Association. Very little has been disclosed on that contract. We ourselves are looking for answers. What we are trying to say, there was no consultation between the government and the Prison Officers Association whatsoever and that contract came like a thief in the night hear the words the man used but i want to just tell you one thing that brought to my attention recently about that amalgamated when they draw the tender documents like with global medical the tender document is structured framed a certain way. way in the united states and i will tell you more about and, that and it's, it, it's developed in a way that, that it limits, else, it limits. of course guarantee. of course it's it's a it's a, it's a ruse yes. it's either that or like like when like when the flag was being made, you create two fake companies and one real company, so the two fake companies don't qualify. Hear this. Just imagine a garbage collector gets knocked down crossing the road on Chumamonka Road, PT Valley at 7, 10 a.m. while collecting garbage. Mm. The police arrive at 8, 10 a.m., that's an hour oh. later, and find the gentleman laying at the side of the road covered by a blanket and a good Samaritan standing there with an umbrella. The man cannot move because his legs are clearly damaged and unable to move. It then takes the ambulance until 10.20 to arrive to take the man to the hospital. The man was knocked down three hours before. Hmm. Listen, I have, Robert, if I tell you, this is what I got, and this is a matter that is going on. Dear sir, re-defamation claim by Global Medical Response of Toronto Tobago. I instruct, this is between, this is between Global Medical Response Toronto Tobago and Philip Alexander. I instruct Mr. Michael Kwamina, who acts on behalf of Global Medical Response of Toronto Tobago, and I refer to the caption, GMRTT is an emergency medical services and ambulance provider born out of a joint venture between Amalgamated Security Services Limited and an America and American Medical Response, a provider of ambulance and an emergency medical services in North America. In or around March 10, 2017, via your highly subscribed Facebook page, you authored and published the following statement with respect to global medical response, which is wholly defamatory. This is what I said. For the $92 million we give Global Medical Response Trans Tobago annually to provide 25 ambulances as disclosed by the Minister of Health, we could buy 164 brand new, state-of-the-art, fully built and outfitted units, four each for every constituency, and assign them dutifully to fire stations in each and every constituency, control them by one centrally, professionally trained paramedic call center. It could be located as far away as India, hmm. believe it or not, and still be more functional than what obtains here. <laughs> Monitor them via GPS tracking hmm. to the National Operation Center. Provide additional stretchers at the hospitals for a quick swap out at the accident emergency um, department and do a far better job and cost far less than what we get for what we currently pay and still leave over $10 million as change. Imagine that. There can be, and this is what I said, and I don't want to repeat that here because I don't want them to write you. The fact that many of our citizens have died as a direct result of this company's failure to provide what it was contracted and paid for should be the justification for an inquiry, if not an investigation, into not only the operations of the company, but the terms and conditions of the contracts granted and all public office holders who might have benefited over the years as well. Robert, I am here to tell Trinidad and Tobago this morning and this is what I told people there is going to be an announcement. And this is the announcement. We are calling on every citizen who has ever had a problem with the ambulance service. 
If you ever called for an ambulance and they took more than half an hour or an hour to come, message me. My phone number is 6822110. Don't call me to chat because when everybody calling me to chat, I can't take all the calls. But send me detailed messages on 6822110. I want your name, I want your address, I want your phone number, I want your address. I want your name, your email address, and your phone number. Send us a brief detail and the team will contact you. Anybody who has lost a loved one because of the failure of the ambulance service to arrive, contact us as well. Robert, hear this. An elderly woman died on Saturday. This is 8th of April. This is a month ago. While this case going on, while they're trying to shut me up, every minister in the, in the government, every member of parliament keep asking the question, how the hell does this contract still exist? You're supposed to provide 75 ambulances. You provide 22. We have people on our team who used to work for Global Medical Response. We have rosters that the country being charged for 65 ambulances and 17 on the road. One night, a team from a team responded to Sangre Grande, Piaco, and Diego Martin, and then crash. The ambulance driver and operator end up in hospital because they're all over the country like madmen. When you could put two ambulances in every constituency, boom. When you call for an ambulance, short distance, and it coming <clears throat> from Piaco, it's just like the police. An elderly right. woman died on Saturday. I just want to wrap this up. An elderly woman died on Saturday when she was pinned in the wreckage of a vehicle that slid off a slippery road in Plum Bay and crashed into a tree. It took more than an hour before the police and the paramedics arrived. I just want to tell Trina Tobago this. And I'm calling on everybody who has ever had a problem with the ambulance service. We're doing this in your name and we're suing them for financial compensation for everybody. We will be filing a lawsuit against Global Medical Response Trina Tobago Limited against Michael Abood, Paul Anderson, and the Ministry of Health, Trinidad and Tobago, individually and collectively, on behalf of all of those who have lost their lives or lost loved ones due to the negligence as a result of both Global Medical Response and the Ministry of Health to provide a proper and functional emergency response paramedic and ambulance service as outlined in the contract. I am saying this today because this morning I learned that Global Medical Response has filed an injunction in the High Court trying to restrain me from speaking on this matter. I appeared before the courts last two weeks and they asked if I would voluntarily be gagged. And I asked the judge, I said, Your Honor, this is a matter of free speech and we have evidence to back up everything that we say. Global Medical Response is attempting to behave as if this matter has already been adjudicated upon. We are pursuing this legally. We are bringing the equivalent of a class action lawsuit against them on behalf of everybody who has lost loved ones. And that's a lot of people. All right, well, that's where we have to end um, today's um, conversation. Um, remember this speeding thing, I am frustrated with it. I don't know about you. I'll be calling on you to support me for, so maybe we'll, we'll block up a few roads. Let me see what we can do. Let's see police could close down train and the bigger, the citizens could do the same. And we need to- Why we don't, yeah, why we don't have a day of total um, citizenship. No, we need to do that. A day of total yeah, citizenship, yeah, yeah. yeah, I like that. I'll be calling for that, I'll be calling for that. I'm because not... at the end of it all, people, just remember something. This is your country. While we have to follow the law, there must also be enforcement of what is needed by the population. One can work without the other. We pay some bills, that will bring us to the close of today. And then, of course, um, look out uh, next week when we'll be back. Uh, we want to thank all of you for your support. And we look forward to your continued uh, listening to M1047. The lunchbox is up this, this afternoon, so stay tuned. To all of you watching us on social media, we wrapped up here for the day. We'll continue later on the live on the live video at tonight's live video. We will continue this after Frontline. All of you who would like to get involved and help, my my number is six eight two twenty one ten. Message or WhatsApp me. Please don't call or private message me on Facebook. Stay safe, children.